Oh, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to today's, to today's seminar. I'm Nigel Gilbert, a professor of sociology at the University of Surrey and the director of CCAN. For those of you who haven't joined us before, CCAN stands for the Center for the Evaluation of Complexity Across the Nexus, which has been transforming the practice of policy evaluation across the food, energy, water, and environmental domains to make it fit for a complex world. We've achieved this through pioneering, testing, and promoting innovative policy evaluation approaches with UK government departments. To find out more, about us, please visit our website at ccan.ac.uk. Today's webinar is about the latest National Audit Office report on evaluating government spending. We're delighted to have Phil Bradburn presenting the web webinar. Phil Bradburn is really the right person to do this because he coordinated the National Audit Office's central analysis capability since 2010, and he was part of the team that produced the NAO's 2021 report evaluating government spending. Not only that, but he was also involved in the previous 2013 report called Evaluation in Government. So he is a very, well, a very expert in the, in the progress that the government has been making uh, on evaluation. And he's also served on CCAN's advisory board. Phil is going to speak to us for about 30 minutes and then we'll have time for questions and answers. If you have questions, please submit your questions at any point via the question box, which you should be able to see on the Zoom webinar control panel Q&A. We're going to record this session and it'll be made available later on the CCAN website along with the slides. So I'll now hand over to, to Phil uh, and uh, look forward to a really interesting presentation. Phil. Thanks, Nigel. Um, so there are so many of us here, and I think whether you're from an analytical policy uh, government or academic uh, background, private sector, charity sector, uh, was simply interested in evaluation or the work of the National Audit Office. It's fantastic to see you, see you here. And perhaps you've read our report from cover to cover, perhaps you've heard some of the findings and maybe you've even watched the Public Accounts Committee session online last Wednesday. Uh, but what I want to do today is to spark some conversations and some questions, uh, maybe think what uh, findings, which findings uh, chime most with you. What do you think should be done? And we'd love to see your comments in the chat bar. And I'm sure also there are many, many evaluation experts uh, in our midst, uh, lots of fantastic experience here. And I'm not coming here to tell you how to evaluate, far, far from it. Uh, lots of uh, guidance and expertise exists out there. And, uh, but what I can do is bring insights from our latest uh, report and point to what we've uh, seen across government. Very happy to answer questions. And before I get into it, I want to explain uh, why I'm so particularly interested in valuation. And during much of my career, uh, thinking back, I've been interested in how we can use analysis to work together and, and make a difference. And also uh, the power of evaluation to uncover the truth about how well policies are working uh, and, and for who and why and, 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 and where and whether it is worth it. And, you know, as many of you know, evaluation really isn't uh, easy, but it can be powerful, can't it? And, you know, while it's not always done uh, very well, it can be also uh, spectacularly uh, useful. And I think my my feeling around evaluation and uh, the, the, the power of it is really what led me to uh, work in uh, government, first of all, and then which led me to uh, the National Audit Office about a decade ago. So 
working on uh, both those uh, reports uh, almost almost a decade uh, in in between. And you know, I want to uh, mention as well that uh, our, our report is more about how the system functions uh, rather than the quality of individual evaluations. We looked into that in our 2013 uh, study. Uh, obviously, put questions in uh, the chat bar. And what I'd really like you to do as well is if, if you can give uh, questions you really want to know the answer to, uh, a, a thumbs up, that'll help uh, Nigel prioritize which uh, questions he uh, puts to me. Um, We've also got some voting as well, because I want to ask you some questions too. And uh, maybe I can also encourage you as well, uh, while I've got your attention to uh, uh, perhaps go and read at least a summary of the report afterwards and maybe share one thing with someone else that struck you about the report. So I want to briefly uh, mention uh, uh, the NAO because uh, many of you will know about us, but uh, I'm, I'm sure there'll be one or two facts that you you don't know. So uh, we uh, we report to Parliament on our on our work, and in fact, our report on evaluation and on modelling went to them last Wednesday. Our work covers two main areas: our financial audit work, so the 400 or so accounts covering central government agencies and other public bodies, and uh, the the amount of uh, Income and spending adds up to some rather incredible sounding 1.7 trillion pounds. So a lot of, lot of money uh, going around. Um, and our second area is uh, value for money work of which the report here on evaluation is uh, just one of the 60 or so that we uh, produce looking at the three years of government spending. So all these reports include findings, recommendations and pointing out lessons for the bodies that we audit uh, uh, across uh, government. So one of uh, the other things that we do is uh, because we look at uh, so many areas of uh, how public spending is being managed across government uh, through VFM work and our financial audit work, we get a really uh, unique perspective into uh, the, the challenges facing government and how they're being met. And uh, we're doing a lot more to uh, share our findings and have conversations uh, like, like this with uh, people like you. So I want to uh, go on to uh, talk a little, about, a little bit about uh, the scope of this report. Um, is, you know, naturally we couldn't do absolutely everything we had to prioritize and the focus for our report really is the center of government. Um, so treasury, cabinet office and the uh, analysis function, and particularly looking at the oversight and what they've done to tackle uh, barriers, incentives, and levers. And, you know, while accounting officers, uh, permanent secretaries in departments are responsible for what they do in their own departments, uh, we uh, made a number of uh, recommendations uh, towards uh, the centre of uh, government uh, trying to uh, get some sustainable change. We looked across demand and supply and governance, but not at the individual evaluations. Uh, we, we, we did a little bit more of that in uh, 2013. We're not setting out how to do evaluation or telling people who are very experienced how to do evaluation. Uh, there's uh, plenty of uh, guns out there, many things read about that. Um, and while we didn't look at evaluation practice in all departments uh, and therefore didn't seek to conclude how individual departments do evaluation, uh, we do know that there are many things happening in evaluation in uh, in uh, various departments. And we also wanted to look at how things were from a departmental perspective. So, you know, how they face the challenges of uh, the various requirements from the centre of government, how they operationalise those, how they, how they see the systemic barriers. And we use the range of evidence sources, as you imagine, our value money uh, work we uh, triangulate a range of uh, different evidence so we had uh, interviews we had many interviews uh, lots of documents that we reviewed we did two surveys uh, one of chief analysts and one of uh, policy uh, uh, heads across uh, government and we did uh, case studies of three government departments so uh, uh, key luck uh, uh, education and uh, home office uh, looking at specific areas of them um, to try and get a Real, a bit of uh, depth 
the inside. Uh, plenty of data analysis as well. And uh, I mentioned our recommendations and, you know, really our recommendations are addressed to various parts of uh, the centre of government and the evaluation uh, community and going to need everyone uh, working together, I think. So we have uh, three polls. We all love polls, uh, don't we, in uh, answering questions. And this all plunges right into uh, the, the heart of our report uh, before I go through to uh, the main findings and uh, the recommendations. So, uh, so I suppose, is the reason that evaluation isn't used as much as it could be, simply be that it doesn't exist? Um, so let's, let's address the evaluation gap here. So I'm going to ask you to cast your vote, and you should see a, a, a little ballot paper on the screen. And in 2019, government looked at the scale and the quality of impact evaluations across government. And they looked at uh, major projects. So what share of planned expenditure on the government major projects portfolio had robust evaluation plans in place? So was it less than 10%, 10 to 30%, 31 to 60%, 61% to 90% or more than 90%. I'll give you, uh, give you a few, few seconds to register your, your post. Oh, fantastic, 100% I see as uh, voted. So uh, let's, uh, let's, see, uh, let's see the results on the screen. Fantastic. So, uh, so we have a remarkably well-informed audience here today. So uh, the answer was, in fact, A, uh, chosen by uh, some 62% of you. So uh, uh, yeah, so uh, the uh, Prime Minister's implementation unit found that just 8% of major project spend had uh, robust evaluation plans. And, and we'll uh, just bring that, uh, bring that down and uh, show you the a nice uh, chart. So, um, yes. So the Prime Minister's implementation unit looked at uh, looked at evaluation plans around major project spend. Uh, they found twenty eight percent of uh, the spend could have been uh, more rigorous in uh, plans given the context and uh, uh, the situation of those uh, projects. Uh, what they were looking for is uh, causality, if possible, and they did err on the side of generosity where it wasn't clear cut. So just what proportion of spending had no impact evaluation plans at all? Well, around two pounds in every three pounds of spending on major projects. So in areas such as major projects where we expected to see rather better plans and they expected to see better plans is rather disappointing. And, you know, really government doesn't know how much of its day-to-day -day activities are covered by evaluation that came through in the evidence that we looked at. And many reports that we publish also note gaps in evaluation evidence. I mean, why is that a problem? Well, you know, robust findings that don't exist uh, uh, can't be used uh, to uh, improve uh, outcomes for the public. We need, need uh, that evidence. We need that evaluation evidence. And, you know, our two recent reports noted uh, gaps. So our local economic growth report found that DLUC uh, uh, lacked uh, the evidence on whether the billions of pounds of public funding it gave to local bodies supporting uh, local growth had the impact they intended. Uh, so it's uh, wasted uh, some opportunities to learn what works best. And our female offenders report found the Ministry of Justice did limited impact evaluation in its, uh, in its work. So uh, it meant that it wasn't in a, in a good position to make uh, the case for future investment. So lots of, uh, lots of things have happened since our report in 2013, I mean, almost a, almost a decade ago. And following our 2013 report, the pace sped up, I suppose, after, after a little delay uh, to begin with. Uh, so the reforms and initiatives of the central government, as well as uh, plenty of things that have been going on in uh, departments. So I suppose it's uh, slow progress in consistent barriers, but uh, there's been a, a kind of speeding up, uh, uh, up of effort uh, towards the end. Um, and, you know, there's more work to do to make sure evaluations really do uh, drive improved outcomes. I'm sure we've all seen barriers to uh, the use of evaluation where we've, where we've worked and maybe where we're working at the moment. And 
you know, I wonder, can you can you remember now what uh, some of the barriers are that you see? In our 2013 report, uh, we noted many barriers and we weren't alone in doing this. I could reel off a list of organisations who've done similar work, including uh, Prime Minister's Implementation Unit, IFG, OECD. And, you know, as you can imagine, uh, barriers can be both on the demand side, supply side, or even, you know, really baked into uh, this, the system. And we did a we did a survey of all chief analysts and heads of policy profession in all 16 core government departments. And we uh, had advice from our uh, fantastic surveys experts and we got a 100% response rate in uh, the core department. So really pleased about that. And I wanna introduce our next poll now. Um, and while our experiences might vary, I want to give you the chance to vote on uh, the, the top two uh, 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 barriers in your in your experience. Uh, so we've got a shortened selection of barriers in our in our poll. You can vote twice, um, hopefully anyway. Hope you can vote twice. Um, and you know, just think about the two most common barriers to using evaluation to inform uh, decision making. So uh, is it around opportunities to learn, not being built in, uh, lack of pressure or demand? Uh, knowledge base uh, of evaluation evidence uh, difficult to access, uh, insufficient capacity of analysts maybe to help policymakers understand uh, the evidence. Um, uh, maybe it's not available when it's needed. Maybe it's just not understood by policymakers. Gosh, so it's uh, and see see all the blue bars moving in in, in front of me. It's uh, it's uh, it's a wonderful thing, wonderful thing to see. So remember, uh, vote twice, you get two, two votes. Fantastic, let's, uh, let's uh, share the results and uh, fantastic. So um, we, showed, um, we showed nine barriers based on ours and others work to uh, chief analysts and uh, heads of policy profession and asked them to rate really whether they agreed or disagreed with the extent of uh, whether they're an issue or not. And we, uh, we also allow them to uh, mention other things as well. And what's really interesting is we've got, uh, we've got a real spread, a real spread, and this really reflects uh, the, uh, the kind of answers we got from chief analysts. So um, I'm gonna show you uh, what we actually found from, uh, the, uh, from the poll. Uh, of uh, the survey of uh, chief analysts and heads of policy. So uh, they mostly agreed really with each other that opportunities to learn are not built into policy design and delivery, but then they tended to diverge. So are they pointing to each other at, uh, to, to a certain extent, or is it just a different perspective on, on things? Maybe uh, put your comments in, in the chat, uh, but chief analysts, uh, we're more likely to say that the evidence wasn't understood by policy and that there was a lack of uh, demand and pressure, while heads of policy profession said that uh, evaluation evidence wasn't available when it was needed and it was difficult to find out what works. So, you know, both these sides are going to have to uh, really work together, uh, have a shared understanding and, and, and really uh, work together to address these barriers. Now I want to move on to our third poll. So this time our poll covers evaluation strategies. So why are evaluation strategies so important? Well, having an evaluation strategy um, can be a really useful statement of the importance of evaluation. So it sets the tone, sets out what's happening, uh, priorities and plans for evaluation across uh, a, a department, a government department. And, we asked chief analysts if the department had an evaluation strategy or plan. That is basically a published or an internal document that sets out uh, the department's uh, future priorities for evaluation. So our poll, which I'll invite you to vote on now, is how many departments out of the core 16 had an evaluation strategy covering the whole department. Three or fewer, four to eight, nine to 12, 13 or more. So I'll give you a few seconds to, 
to vote. Gosh, the, uh, the votes coming in really quick. Um, when I've done these uh, polls before, it's uh, been, been slightly uh, slower. Fantastic, good, good to see this. So we have, uh, let's show the results. Fantastic. Uh, so 4848 uh, 48, uh, for the for the first. Uh, so what I see though is uh, people basically see uh, less than less than half. Um, so it's actually uh, option B. So we found um, that uh, just over uh, well basically uh, six had a, a strategy covering the whole department. Um, and uh, further seven had strategies only in specific policy areas. Three departments actually had no uh, evaluation strategy at all. Um, so, I mean, why, why does that matter? I mean, you know, I mentioned uh, the, the importance of the kind of tone and uh, prioritization and uh, planning and uh, resources. And, you know, one of the things we recommended on the back of this was uh, that uh, Treasury or to write to departments asking them to publish an evaluation strategy uh, covering gaps, plans, lesson learned, uh, and uh, the uh, details of staff and uh, spend, uh, and, and, and linking that really to uh, the uh, ODPs and uh, keeping them updated. So we'll uh, move on to uh, the other things that we found in our report. So. We found a lack of clarity around roles and responsibilities. So lots of bodies involved. Uh, I mentioned some of them a little earlier, Treasury and Cabinet Office and uh, the Evaluation Task Force, uh, Cross-Government Evaluation uh, Group and, and uh, the analysis function so on. Um, there's overlaps plus a lack of uh, strategic uh, direction that we found in our report. So uh, that's really led to uh, a huge variation and we want to see uh, as a recommendation the center of government clarifying how it all fits together the plans the structures and how it will assess uh, implementation of uh, these plans we found limited oversight of uh, departments from the center of government so other than at spending reviews treasury doesn't really check in uh, too much and there's uh, certainly been a lack of follow-up from Treasury uh, spending teams on the uh, settlements, uh, the funding settlements that were given to departments in uh, the spending review uh, that were linked to evaluations. So sometimes those settlements were uh, uh, setting uh, requirements for evaluations to be to be uh, uh, carried out and so on. And when when uh, Treasury does do that, there's uh, it does set those uh, conditions. Uh, there's almost no follow up on them. Uh, afterwards, that is uh, something that they are uh, seeking to change and making moves towards. Uh, so we want uh, Treasury to follow up when they give departments conditional settlements uh, predicated on improving evaluation. Uh, we found gaps in evaluation strategies. So I mentioned uh, that that was uh, that was the poll. So we're going to uh, we we recommended uh, 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 improved transparency, so pushing for evaluation strategies to, uh, to be put out there. And uh, we know that there's uh, work going on in uh, departments to uh, develop these now. And uh, we also found that uh, uh, what might seem to many people a uh, very simple question, how, how many people work on evaluation, how much money are you spending on doing it? Um, it was actually really hard to uh, get an understanding from uh, government departments about what uh, what that amount was, and uh, it's similar to what we found actually in uh, our, our 2013 uh, uh, report. But uh, we found that they didn't really know what uh, what was being spent, how many people uh, were working on evaluation. Eleven departments didn't know about uh, the number of people, and twelve didn't have a, a ready. Uh, ready figure on uh, uh, the amount of spend. So we went away and we estimated it was approximately up to around uh, 84 million pounds before the pandemic uh, that they spent, um, excluding other areas of spend such as on internal staff and evaluators. So this was the, uh, the, the, the evaluations that they were commissioning out. Uh, we found also uh, uh, in uh, 
the uh, the actions really on uh, policy design skills and understanding. So, as with many things, uh, building evaluation in at the start is uh, is a really good idea. Um, I don't think uh, there's many people who would ever recommend uh, waiting until uh, the policy has been uh, rolled out or developed and uh, delivered uh, before even uh, starting to think about evaluation. Uh, it is critical, of course, and uh, really vital to, to do. Uh, it is challenging, of course, to think about evaluation right at the start. Uh, but we found that uh, 10 chief analysts and eight policy heads said that uh, the, and this, by the way, was uh, one of the areas where we, uh, uh, where, they, uh, where they agreed, uh, that uh, the opportunity to learn wasn't built into the design and delivery of uh, policy. We, found, uh, we, you know, we, we, we did see some uh, promising signs that uh, some departments were tackling this. Uh, we came across uh, some good practice examples in our work. So um, uh, really embedding uh, analysts within project uh, program uh, delivery teams, uh, uh, education of uh, 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 policy uh, colleagues, uh, not to make them uh, experts in evaluation, but to make sure that they're aware of uh, how uh, evaluation can benefit things uh, and uh, get uh, get them to ask the right sorts of uh, questions. So all around evaluation literacy, and you can see some of the, uh, the other things there as well. Um, I mean, one of the other things we uh, found as well was the uh, the poor understanding really of uh, the value of evaluation at, uh, at senior levels. And, you know, tone from the top is important, uh, really, isn't it? And the Prime Minister's implementation unit found it was hard to embed a culture of open inquiry and to avoid using evaluation as uh, just simple confirmation uh, to justify uh, the policies that were already uh, that had already been chosen, and you know, seven out of uh, uh, the sixteen chief analysts thought there was a lack of pressure and demand from senior policy uh, colleagues for evaluation. We also found uh, issues around skills of analysts and uh, policy uh, people around evaluation. So, you know, there's. Uh, there's problems recruiting and retaining evaluators, uh, especially senior ones. And uh, we heard uh, many stories when we were talking to, uh, to, to uh, various uh, officials across uh, government around uh, the difficulty, difficulty there. And while there's a career framework created by the analysis function, there's problems around evaluation literacy among, uh, among uh, policy colleagues, uh, policy officials. And, the analysis uh, function is uh, doing some work actually uh, uh, on uh, an audit of uh, analytical skills among uh, policy officials. Uh, so we want to see uh, government really pushing ahead on asking capability and real problems here, and uh, it's important to get uh, get a grip of it really. Um, now, one of the other things is uh, the uh, support that's uh, provided, that's available from uh, the centre of government. And uh, the centre of government provides uh, support to uh, departments, but, uh, you know, of course you need to know that it exists. So awareness is really important. And uh, we found that that was, that picture was uh, really mixed. And there's uh, different views on how, uh, how, uh, how good, that uh, that support has been, and um, so in uh, broad terms, they tend to do better, or they're perceived to do better on evaluation design advice, for example, and uh, worse on uh, helping join up across uh, departments, for example, on uh, data sharing. Uh, these are all areas where departments find it really challenging to tackle on their own. And um, in terms of embedding change and using evaluation findings, uh, this is really the, the last area. And it's around how evaluation evidence is made available and used um, on transparency and publication. We found departments falling short of uh, the, uh, or government rather, uh, falling short of uh, their own guidance. Uh, so 
uh, departments. Uh, when we when we asked the chief chief analyst, we found over a third of chief analyst holders. Uh, it was possible in only some or limited cases to publish in a timely manner, and you know departments generally found it hard to get uh, uh, findings published and sometimes they get agreement from ministers to publish uh, some of these findings. Um, the, uh, we found issues around managing knowledge and, and using it. And, you know, one of, uh, I mean, uh, if you think about the two, two main reasons to uh, evaluate the two broad reasons, you know, you've got learning and also accountability. And since uh, government believes, uh, based on our, uh, our, our survey, that uh, the primary purpose is around finding out what works and so learning about that. Uh, there are actually difficulties in getting to that knowledge, uh, despite initiatives like uh, the, the What Works net uh, networks and so on. Um, it really needs to be more, uh, more done to pull things out across. And uh, in some cases, in, uh, in departments as well. So, you know, the What Works uh, networks, we didn't particularly look at uh, this in depth, but they are only in uh, particular policy areas, and what they uh, what they do is uh, is, uh, is is mixed, I guess. Um, and finally, um, uh, we found that uh, government just doesn't collect or share those uh, success stories about how evaluation has helped uh, improve outcomes. Uh, sometimes it happens in departments. Sometimes by um, Sometimes, perhaps, by uh, uh, knowledge of various networks and, and so on, and almost by uh, accident, you know, people are very keen to share what they've uh, learned, but it's uh, it's it's not done in a very uh, systematic uh, systematic way. Uh, so there's uh, more that can be done there. So we want to see um, uh, both uh, the centre uh, uh, reinforcing the need. For transparency, particularly around uh, publication, and we also want to see more from the centre in uh, supporting departments and others to do the right thing in terms of uh, helping out on uh, providing good practice, bringing that good practice together, toolkits, the operational guidance, and so on, and also uh, demonstrating the value and impact of good evaluation. So, uh, I don't. Uh, uh, can share the uh, slides afterwards and I don't particularly want you to uh, have to uh, read through the uh, conclusion but I'll leave that I'll leave that up as uh, kind of background but uh, in summing, uh, summing up really there's uh, there's been action by departments but in general the action by the centre has been slow and uh, only more recently have they uh, made bolder uh, commitments and followed that up by strengthening capability and requirements at the centre so for example the evaluation task force I mean it's been and uh, the analysis function and, uh, and its activities around evaluation. Uh, so it's welcome, but there's uh, certainly more to do and uh, the center of government and departments need to keep the foot to the floor. So we put forward recommendations, uh, some of which I've mentioned that I've uh, gone through. And there was also a public accounts committee hearing uh, last week. So uh, that was on, uh, that was on Wednesday, and there'll be a Treasury minute that comes comes out uh, uh, following following that up with uh, you know what uh, uh, what's going to be done in light of uh, the report that BAC will uh, will publish based on uh, the session. Um, and uh, our recommendations really are to try and uh, tackle uh, some of uh, some of these uh, some of these issues. Um, so alongside those from the PAC, we hope will. Uh, lead to uh, sustained improvements. So I wonder, do those uh, findings chime with you? Uh, what what did you uh, what really struck you as we uh, as we went through uh, the, the findings? Uh, what do you think should be done uh, to improve things? Uh, let me know, and hopefully we've got some uh, questions already in uh, in 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 the chat, Nigel. What can you tell us? Yes, indeed, we have a few questions. Um, I'm going to start off by asking one myself. Oh, <laughs> chose privilege, right? Yes, while, while everybody else thinks of the really interesting questions to ask to, to put into the Q&A. Um, yeah, so 
you produced a report in 2013. You produced a report in 2021. I want you to do a bit of uh, foresight and tell me what's it going to say when you do your report in 2029? Oh gosh, that's, uh, that, uh, that's great. Um, well, I'd really love to be writing a that, that says that um, uh, following a slow start and following the uh, 2021 report, uh, government has uh, uh, really uh, delivered and followed through on uh, the, uh, the the recommendations that uh, that we've made, uh, that NEO made and PAC made, and uh, that uh, evaluation is in a, a spectacularly uh, better better place and it's uh, fully embedded across uh, all government programs and, and policies. Uh, that is uh, what I'd love to, uh, that's the kind of report that I'd love to write. And I'm sure that many people would love to read as well. Indeed, and, and, and what's the chances of that actually happening, do you think, on a scale of one to 10? Well, I think it, it depends, doesn't it? Uh, you, know, real, uh, you know, it comes down to a range of uh, things. Let's say, um, uh, I don't know, can we, can we go for a seven, 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 seven and a half, something like that? Um, let's uh, let's see. I really, uh, really want to be able to write that kind of uh, report, you know, because um, just having having really good evaluation, uh, quality evaluation that gets to the truth of of what works and why and uh, and for whom that uh, that would just make me really happy. Um, you know, while it's uh, well. You know, it's all very well writing uh, 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 critical reports. Um, you know, there's there's uh, there's a bigger thing here, isn't there? You know, it's seen, it's seen improvements for the public uh, and seeing public services work really, really well because you know they've got good good fa foundations uh, of uh, uh, evidence on what works and why. Yeah. Okay. Well. Um... Let me follow that up with a question from, from Maxine Rhodes, who asks, do you believe there's an increasing pressure to evaluate well now to improve learning or do limits in staff capability that mean that more traditional methods of evaluation are more likely to be utilized? How far is failure allowed and how far does this inform learning? So, so I think what I'm getting from that is, um, you know, perhaps should you should you rely more, or is there kind of pressure to uh, deliver such that uh, you rely more on kind of very tri tried and traditional uh, 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 kind of evaluation techniques, uh, maybe more monitoring rather than uh, you know uh, some of the more exotic uh, ways to evaluate, I guess. Um, and I mean. First of all, you know, we're not uh, sitting here in uh, the National Order Office saying, you know, you either must do randomised control trials or you must do uh, uh, some kind of quasi-experimental uh, methods and so on. You know, monitoring is, uh, is, is also uh, valuable. Um, and, you know, it comes down, doesn't it, to uh, just how the policy is set up, how the policy is designed and also how it's... Uh, how it's rolled out, how it's delivered as well, because sometimes monitoring can uh, deliver uh, the results for you, you know, is if you're, uh, if, if the design of the policy is, in, uh, uh, is done uh, well, then uh, you'll get an awful lot from uh, monitoring. But, you know, we're not sat here telling you uh, how to evaluate, and there's many, many, many experts out there who uh, will uh, give you the detail on, uh, you know, which evaluations are best and so on. And uh, what we what we're quite keen on is uh, is getting some sense of causality, though, uh, because that's uh, that's certainly what uh, the centre of government is uh, looking for. That's what the evaluation task force uh, was uh, looking at um, as well, and what uh, the prime minister's implementation unit were particularly looking for. You know, um, but uh, our our report didn't look into the best types of evaluation or how evaluation should be done. We're really looking at the system. Right. 
Okay, that, that's good. Um, a, cu a couple of questions that asked uh, whether you, the, you or the report looked at spe any specific government spending or any specific uh, evaluations on. Um, no, we didn't look at uh, we didn't look at individual evaluations and look at the kind of quality of uh, those, but we we did uh, case studies in uh, some areas. So. Um, there was uh, uh, there was the um, uh, I think it was uh, I'll, I'll get the words in a slightly wrong order I think but uh, it was uh, in uh, the areas of uh, vulnerable uh, people in uh, DLUC um, and uh, we also uh, so there was the supporting uh, people uh, program that was uh, part of part of that. I think perhaps uh, around uh, homelessness uh, we looked at, um, and uh, we also looked at. Uh, 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 I think it was early education. Um, I, I don't have the report directly in front of me, unfortunately. It's uh, right across the other side of uh, right across the other side of the room. Never mind. Um, but I think that the, the point was that you used some case studies and and, and yeah, just a drew yeah, a, to kind of get a sense of what uh, what yeah. was going on in those uh, general areas. But we didn't uh, we didn't go into uh, depth in the way that we did in twenty thirteen on individual evaluations and 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 their quality. We we right. didn't do that. That was out of scope. Okay. Um, so uh, let me move on to um, uh, some questions from uh, some anonymous uh, person um, who wanted to know where did the list of support from the Centre on Evaluation come from and who does those at the moment? I think that was slide 18, if I remember correctly. Yeah, uh, that's, uh, that's very simple. It came from the Centre. Oh, right. Which yeah. Centre? So uh, it was the so the cabinet office. So it's the central government. So uh, we defined that as the cabinet office, the uh, the treasury, and the evaluation task force. Right. Okay. And there's also a comment in the in, in the Q and A um, about uh, one of the, the ba some more barriers to the use of evaluation. But I, I think oh yes, there's uh, there's lots and lots, list. And lots of barriers, uh, lots of barriers, and uh, the uh, the the poll that I put up earlier was uh, was a very shortened uh, 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 shortened list of uh, of them for the purposes of uh, the poll. But uh, we gave I think nine or ten uh, key barriers, and we we uh, we we drew those from the uh, variety of uh, uh, documents out there. Uh, OECD has looked at uh, barriers, uh, IFG looked at barriers, um, and uh, Prime Minister's Implementation Unit looked at barriers. Um, and of course we did in 2013 as well. So we also asked, uh, we asked a free form question as well, um, so, as well yeah. as the, uh, the, the, the particular options. So you might say this is a complex system. It well, says from, yeah, I mean, as director of CCAN, yeah, I would say that, wouldn't yeah. I? Yeah, I mean, as with uh, as with many many things, it, uh, you know, problems are caused by well, the the outcome is as uh, caused by many 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 uh, different uh, contributing factors, isn't it? And yeah. uh, some of it's uh, quite context specific, I guess. As well. But I, I will just mention the two barriers which are being suggested because I think both of those are mm. interesting. Uh, one was that policies change too often, so that ministers want evidence to justify the next thing rather than engendering a culture of testing, learning, and improving existing policies and programs. Yeah. yeah you have. And that there was too much expectations of conclusions to simple. For example, this worked or this was the impact, but in practice, much of the government policy is complicated and causality is difficult to prove definitively. Yes. Yes, it is, it is very difficult, and it's even more difficult if evaluators uh, only get a foot in uh, uh, after the policy has been designed and already started being rolled out. Um, yeah. You know, it's uh, it's much more difficult that way, uh, as well as I'm sure everyone will uh, will recognise. And yeah, I mean, the it's a, it's a very good point about uh, chopping and changing of uh, policies, and also the desire to have a simple 
simple answer this worked or it didn't work um and you know there was uh you know jumping back to our 2013 uh report uh there was uh there was there was a indication uh no more than an indication though uh, you know is uh but we, we we mentioned it at the time that you know the the reports the evaluations that were rather more um rather more simple let's say uh so you know they didn't the ones where there was no baseline or no comparison group and and and, and so on um they were often they often tended to be rather bolder in their claims about whether uh, a particular policy uh, worked or not um as opposed to the more more uh more uh, refined uh, evaluation designs let's say uh, they could be much more nuanced but i mean it's never going to change uh, uh uh you know what uh what senior decision makers will will want you know they're, they're always uh, there's always going to be a desire isn't there for 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 a very simple uh simple answer you know look does it work or does it does it not and you know you can you need to be able to answer the kind of yes and uh, yes or no but then uh, provide the additional uh, nuance around it. But yeah, I recognise uh, both of those yeah. uh, difficulties and challenges. And in fact, that's really the substance of a question from Ali Noor. How can we as practitioners frame conclusions so that they are robust, but also allow for nuance and subjectivity in complex evaluation? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's interesting, isn't it? Um, the because I think one, it's really important to uh, be absolutely clear about what uh, what the conclusion is. Be absolutely clear about it, and uh, not uh, not uh, uh, dumb it down. Uh, you know, you need to, uh, but you also need to communicate effectively as well. And I think part of part of it as well is understanding. Uh, you know, some of it's around evaluation literacy of uh, uh, policy colleagues and also uh, government ministers as well. And you know, it, when we were at PAC last Wednesday, uh, three in Diamond, uh, there was talking about uh, uh, some of the literacy work that they're, they're doing, particularly around uh, stats and data and so on, with with ministers. And you mentioned uh, 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 mentioned uh, doing uh, doing that. Uh, I think the previous uh, week or so, um, but it's it's really important, you know, one to help people understand what the constraints are. You know, you need to understand on both sides what the constraints are, what's possible in terms of evaluation, and what is possible in terms of uh, what the constraints are, rather in terms of uh, policy design and uh, delivery. You know, ministers aren't going to wait four years to find out the answer of, uh, you know, the kind of long term consequences of uh, a, a program. And you do need to build in some of this kind of test, a test and learn approach, uh, but have more of a kind of sense of uh, uh, open inquiry. Um, I think often there's uh, or, or, or there can certainly be uh, quite a push to uh, kind of uh, have a have something in mind about what what is going to work, and then almost uh, uh, look for the uh, look for the evidence to uh, uh, support that, rather than kind of testing it in a more rigorous way. So, you know, for example, piloting, um, you know, that's uh, sometimes quite uh, quite popular. But uh, how many times do programs get piloted in areas where they are most likely to work, and what does that really tell you? You know. Is it is it not better to uh, uh, try something in the most challenging situation so that you can uh, you can really learn something? Um, I mean, it's difficult, isn't it? Because you know you want to make progress, you want to make progress and tackle the uh, the most pressing issues, but also you know there's a conflict, isn't there? Sometimes because you know you do have to uh, look at uh, what you know you you perhaps have to look at other areas so that you can really learn so that you can have a big impact elsewhere and also uh, how many times have uh, there's been a pilot scheme but actually the uh, policy has been implemented before the pilot well done before the answers are even in yeah yes yeah um 
Okay. Um, coming back to, to my, the question about, you know, how we're actually going to make all of these good things stick. Onto, uh, Matt Georges asks, um, uh, no, sorry, wrong one. Uh, an anonymous attendee asks, did your uh, report cover the uh, Foreign Office, Foreign Commonwealth uh, and DFID and other official development assistance teams uh, where monitoring, evaluation and learning are much more prevalent, allegedly, uh, in, than in domestic projects. And I'll add, add to that and say, well, uh, one of the uh, evaluation, one of the, the pressures for evaluation up until Brexit was the fact that the European Commission required uh, much of its spending to be evaluated and you, you didn't get the money unless you had an evaluation plan. So what I'm getting at is, do you think that one way of getting this uh, pushed through, better evaluation pushed through would actually to be make it uh, a legal requirement? Uh, it's interesting. So the, there's a few questions there. So first of all, um, we, it, as I mentioned earlier, we, we did three uh, case studies. FCDO was not one of those uh, case study departments. However, they did feature in the cross department uh, uh, surveys that we did. So uh, from the chief analyst and also the head of uh, policy professions. So they were covered within our, um, our uh, cross government survey uh, uh, results. So you can have a, have a look back there. Our 2013 report, um, we go, go back almost a decade, you know, they had uh, the, I think they just introduced the um, independent uh, aid um, uh, evaluation uh, unit, uh, ICAI, I, I think it was uh, known as. And uh, we we looked at uh, the spending review uh, bid and the evaluation uh, that was uh, that, uh, that that formed part of the uh, spending review bid. Um, in terms of um, the uh, various requirements on evaluation. You mentioned legal requirements uh, and, and, and the particular example of uh, the EU. Um, I mean, we've, I think there was, there was a, the, uh, there's an interesting uh, thing that we noticed uh, when we were talking to uh, DLUC, I think it's the, I think it's the Supporting People Program, but I might be uh, wrong on this, but there's, there's a requirement to report to Parliament every every year, and that can certainly provide a, a bit of a touchstone, so that you know, a bit of a kind of trigger for policy colleagues and analysts and evaluators to work together, because you know you want to be able to report on what's happened, what difference has been made, and it sets the kind of frame, doesn't it, then for um, uh, discussions about um, uh, impact or how uh, the kind of process evaluations, what they're finding and, and so on. So, you know, I think it can be a useful trigger. I think though, the, the, real, the real prize here is uh, having people understand the reasons and the benefits the, uh, that uh, evaluations can bring. You know, I think, you, you know, while, while I'm not suggesting you don't need any requirements at all, um, or you know legal requirements or whatever you know you can you can uh, you know they all have a place to pay a part to play rather. Um, I think it's really vital that people do understand the value of evaluation and you know if we can get to a world where um, both analysts and the policy colleagues and ministers um, uh, understand. The benefit of doing evaluation and really want to do it for for for, for those uh, benefits without anyone requiring them to do it, then that is uh, that's really where you want to end up, isn't it? Um, because I think uh, you know the danger is, of course, that you uh, otherwise just become a, you know it becomes a kind of tick box exercise and it's seen as a hoop to jump through rather than. Um, rather than uh, people seeing it as a, uh, a, a, a kind of crucial part of policy uh, development and uh, delivery and accountability and learning. Um, but I think you do need some requirements to uh, perhaps uh, prime the pump and uh, get, get things moving, perhaps. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, thank you. Matt Georges asks, is the delay or lack of publication to do with ministers not wanting findings made public? Or is it simply the bureaucracy associated with the uh, gov.uk website? Or a bit of both? Or something else? I think as with, uh, as with most things, there's, uh, there's a range of different uh, reasons depending on uh, the, the exact uh, circumstance. Um, I mean, we, we heard uh, various uh, various stories about how difficult it was and uh, to get ministers to agree to uh, publish findings uh, sometimes or uh, even sign up to uh, uh, pub uh, publishing the, uh, the, uh, the report at the end anyway um be before it is even in so you know there are some uh, difficulties there and um in uh, the pac session last week the public accounts committee session um uh, the witnesses there were talking about um how uh, evaluate uh, you know it's it, it's a world away from uh, uh, official statistics uh where ministers can't uh you know kind of intervene with uh official statistics to stop them being published but um you know we're well away from that with evaluation because uh as they uh, as they said at the time it's uh it's more kind of publication by consent as such uh by mutual consent so um i think i think it's perhaps let it, I think it's perhaps less about um, the, uh, you know, I imagine there are some uh, some some uh, difficulties that can be ironed out, for example, in the process of uh, getting getting things uh, published. Uh, but um, I think it's uh, I think where where there's a will to do it, there's uh, there's a way, isn't there? <laughs> yes, but the question is, is there a will? <laughs> well, I mean, that's uh, that's exactly it, isn't it? Um, and you know, there's there's various. Uh, if you look at the the declaration that came out and so on, I think it was uh, uh, last year. Uh, the uh, you know you've got Michael Gove saying various things about evaluation. Evaluation is a, um, uh, and we heard this quite uh, quite a lot from uh, the people we talked to across uh, government. You know, ministers are talking more about evaluation, and uh, there seems to be. An interest in evaluation, but you know we need to see whether it goes further than that, don't we? Indeed. And in fact, uh, we have a comment uh, that uh, maybe there's a role for something like the OSR, um, uh, the Office of St uh, St Official Statistics Regulator, uh, to encourage publication, particularly if public funds have been spent on external contractors. And I suppose the answer to that is uh, probably yes, but. Uh, probably not going to be the top of the government's uh, priority list yeah i mean we 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 uh, i mean we uh, we think government should be uh, putting, uh you know putting a lot of effort into uh, transparency and getting more things uh out there you know it should be everything um i mean of course you know you can always find reasons uh you know in some specific circumstances why you wouldn't want to do that but in terms of uh, the spending we, we looked at the external uh, spend and went through uh, Contracts Finder with a fine tooth comb uh, to find what was uh, being spent. And we came up with, uh, I think one, one year we found 60 something million uh, was spent and uh, 84 million in, uh, the, the, in, 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 the, in one of the years before uh, the pandemic. Uh, so, you know, it's a, it's a big lump of money and uh, the spending is out there, but it's not necessarily linked to uh, the outcomes, you know, the, the outputs. Uh, yeah. that are published and that needs to be clearer and you know ju just as a final point i know we're, we're running out of time here but uh the um uh the uh, the evaluation uh, task force in uh, the center of government in uh cabinet office is uh is uh pushing for uh, uh publication of uh, uh what evaluations are uh, going to be done and what will be published and that uh, this was a this is uh, something that uh, we mentioned in our report as well. Uh, we're really super keen to see that and proper held into account, um, you know, to try and get away from this publication bias yeah. as well. Okay, well, uh, thank you very much indeed. There's a fascinating discussion and uh, thank you to the audience for all these really interesting questions. We need to stop there, but I'd just like to thank uh, Phil again for a really interesting uh, uh, talk.
And uh, if you want to see it all again, it'll be on our CCAN website uh, in a, a few days' time. So thanks from all of us to Phil. Bye Thank then, you. everybody.